Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Season 1, Episode 13, Thoughts. This episode is called Tracks. Another episode I love. Spoilers for the MCU leading up to and including this episode. I will not be spoiling anything later in the MCU in this video. And yeah, before I dive in, the top link in the description box will enable you to donate to the Second After Strikers. I implore you to do so. And then there are links to videos to help explain why this is such an important strike. So, <laughs> I like that, you know, Gemma says, thanks, Dad, who looks, who is much too young to have a daughter my age or something like that. And I see Ward managed to get his shirt off. Wow, Sky's Scottish accent is horrible. I think it might even be worse than my Irish accent. So it's good that... Fitz can do a, a good American accent. I wonder if, if, if... Was it extremely difficult for him to to say the line, you know, the, they had such good teeth on American television, or... Because that is, like, a, a very stereotypical American joke about Great Britain. And, yeah, Gemma has learned from, you know, her interaction with Sitwell. She is terrible at improvisation, but she excels at preparation. So she has this really detailed backstory worked out. Awesome to see a Stan Lee cameo. <laughs> and the urn is dropped. I ain't cleaning him up. And I do appreciate, like, at first it did look like the grenade rendered the train invisible. And it's the kind of thing where you're like, I mean, in, in the MCU that could happen, but it's still like, how and where did it go and kind of thing. But then later we realize, you know, it stunned them. They were lying there looking ridiculous. And we jump back and see the perspective of another character. So very vantage point and lost and that kind of thing. And that happens three or four times the episode. And yeah, uh, Coulson says, I hope it's not a portal. I can't deal with Asgard today. Very fun when they had problems with the hollow, hollow, hollow table, I guess, with the um, you know, at first, they, they struggle to even find the, you know, War does find the button. Coulson couldn't do that here. I guess ended up giving up. And then, you know, ugh, it's so cluttered. Okay, uh, get rid of that, get rid of that. Okay, this is what we need. Okay, so zoom. I mean, pinch and zoom, right? That's got to be, oh, okay. And, and then, oh, it must have been fun. I hope to, to do the sound design for this episode to, to come up with several distinctly different no that's not right digital hollow sounds and you know finally things okay this has got to be it and it renders it like you know this this like impressionist painting hollow holographic version of the thing and finally Coulson's like let's just upload it to, to HQ And Ward talks to Coulson about Melinda May, and we s start to see a bit of a conflict between the two of them over her, which, you know, at the end of the episode, Ward blames Coulson for Skye getting hurt. And, uh, you know, there's this tense moment where Coulson is helping Melinda May with the, you know, getting patched up, something that Ward offered to help with and that she shut him down on. And Coulson says, if you screw this up, you'll spend the rest of your years, S.H.I.E.L.D., watching Blonsky's cryo cells. So that's their explanation for why, you know, what happened after the Incredible Hulk with the Abomination. Wheels up in five. Badass. 
and yeah, we, we jump back again. Does anyone read me? No, you, you're like a sphinx. And it, it is legitimately like, she's, she's right, they look ridiculous as they were frozen. Really love her freeing herself with, you know, the get stabbed, like, that's just what I need, which is, you know, that is a saying, like, I need this, like, I need a hole in the head. And, you know, she grabs the knife, cuts herself loose, and fights them all off. It's just so cool. And Gemma fires the gun, thankfully not hitting anyone. And we jump back again. And, yeah, very cool to see Mike again, though sad circumstances, obviously. And Ian gets very sadistic, like smiling at the the leg, clearly hurting. And the, um, yeah, when he's trying to get Mike to, to hurt Sky and these kinds of things. And yeah, Sky fires uh, fires a gun, and Ward dual wheels night night guns. Very very cool. You're gonna be okay. Say the GD words. Put her in there. I meant gentle like. And Sky lived. And Gemma, you know, cries literally on Fitz's shoulder. I mean, her performance in the train wasn't that bad. I thought she was fairly convincing as the grieving daughter. It's not your fault. It's not your fault. Yeah, I feel like I've made it clear enough that... That's a reference to Goodwill Hunting. And the, you know, you shouldn't blame yourself. I'm not. And Mike is not allowed to see Ace yet. And we see Project Deathlock. So, yeah. That's, it is very cool that they're actually going there with that. Now, the... Let's see. Oh wow! Um, according to IMDb trivia, Ming Na Wen suffers from a fear of heights. Had to muster up all her courage to film the scene of May walking atop the moving train. Um, very cool to see Carlo Rota. You know he's the the villain's agent in in this, and you know to me when when I see him, I primarily think of Yakaveta and the Boondock Saints. You know, bad movie, but he's really good in it. And let's see. <laughs> because there was no equipment in existence that would fit to stand in for the hyperbaric chamber Mike was kept in, the production team had to design and build one themselves. They had to do it quickly, so much so that the paint was still literally drying when the set was wheeled in for filming. At 40 minutes and 5 seconds, Hollywood cliche number 89, male actors must always punch something when they are angry. And... Yeah, this is the first appearance of Deathlock in live action. And... I think that is all I have to say about this one. Uh, right, it's it is legitimately chilling that you know the the yeah centipede actually managed to get the the night night gun. You know the the what are they called the neuro dendrotoxin, something like that, 
you know, and and made that into this grenade with airborne version of it. And it, it is quite clever, the, you know, the fact that the grenade is what the the people on the train, the bad guys on the train, use against the shield agents. You know, if they if they can just stun the agents and then get away in time, you know, that's gonna mean significantly less heat than actually killing shield agents. And I, I enjoyed Sky and Fitz pretending to be together and then getting, you know, one of them says it's Saturday, one says it's Sunday as like six month anniversary. Well, six months ago we met, but only one month ago that the, the, we started dating because he was intimidated or something, something like that. And, you know, she's, she kisses him on the cheek and then afterwards she's like, wow, you really, seemed very uncomfortable back there. You mean when you kissed me on the cheek like my grandmother? And <laughs> right, it was it was kind of funny when you know, Colson said it's happening on my plane talking about you know, sex between Ward and Melinda May. And then he says, "No, we never did it." on the plane and it's like I don't think he meant it literally I think he meant this you know you work for me and it have you know it's more like it happened on my watch kind of thing you know he didn't mean physically you know I can't believe you both uh, you had sex together on the plane that I am in charge of. you know just that was yeah um, I think that might be about it. Um, right, I, I, yeah, I like the reveal that it, you know, Melinda May was the one who, the, uh, what's it called? She, she, um, what's it called? Um, the, the truck, you know, she, she wanted to make sure that it could drive them when they came to. So she, you know, well, actually, yeah, I guess she was actually going to, um, what's the word? She would have driven them, but she ended up getting caught before having a chance to, but yeah. Um, yeah, just all around quite good. Um, I gotta say, I really appreciate that the show doesn't go completely nuts with the jumping in, you know, chronological jumping in editing. I, you know, not my favorite thing about early Alias. I think they did it too many times. And it ended up being, you know, it didn't keep being cool. Um, yeah, that is it for this one. So the the yeah, you have a real chance to to make things right with your daughter. I suggest you take it.